I think one of the things uh, people should know that any kind of chemical that will be able to kill bacteria or change bacteria genetically, like its DNA is manipulated in somehow. I mean, we know that sunlight can do that, UV rays from sun, but also other chemicals around us that we use daily can actually do that. And sanitizers are also one of them. And I think in this COVID pandemic, we have used a lot more sanitizer, and which means basically, again, that there is an opportunity for these organisms to um, have their DNA manipulated or uh, accumulate mutations in them. And that will make them resistant to these um, agents. So if you use too much of the sanitizer, you are actually giving them an opportunity to resist that. And we recognize some of these uh, bacteria which are opportunists. And I think these will be the first ones which will actually try to take advantage of this situation. So uh, limit the use of uh, sanitizers, limit the use of all kinds of uh, microbial control methods because not all organisms around you are pathogens and they are harming you. There are many uh, factors to AMR or antibiotic or antimicrobial resistance, but animal uh, husbandry or animal um, uh, products is uh, one of the biggest ones. Food shortage is um, a major thing. And so I think that pressure actually led to the farmers who started using growth hormones to actually make more beef or meat or pork or poultry or chicken, all of these different uh, meat products uh, or animal products, and they use growth hormones for it, plus antibiotics to prevent their disease. And majority of these are used for basically not treating diseases, but treating uh, basically, those conditions in which the animals are living, for example, the sanitation is not that good. It, this is a major factor. I think in future, what we need to do is try to find a solution for these farmers to have some kind of guidelines which are protected by legislation and protected by rules and policies that are consistent throughout nationally or uh, when we're talking about different countries internationally uh, under a World Health Organization. I believe that uh, going forward, animal husbandry needs to be in a better condition to actually help animal contribution towards uh, antimicrobial resistance spreading in the, uh, in the environment. With today's world in which we are living in a, inside a pandemic, what I can think of is that um, wear a mask. <laughs> when we saw a huge increase in use of antibiotics because of COVID, uh, not only that physicians were not sure what to do with the symptoms, uh, flu-like symptoms, or, but people were really scared and they wanted to actually know uh, whether they can take an antibiotic. An example would be azithromycin. I think it was used a lot and prescribed. So wearing a mask is actually going to reduce indirectly the antibiotic use. And that antibiotic use means less antibiotics in the environment and less antimicrobial resistance developed in these organisms. Yes, um, bacteriophages are a viable strategy for future fight for reducing AMR. And um, there are many properties of uh, phages that actually help us do that. Uh, there is high specificity when you talk about the phages. Uh, they only infect the specific bacteria that they are against. So that takes into account that there is um, no damage to the host as well as to the other bacteria, which might be beneficial bacteria in your body. 
Beside that, I think it is easier to find in nature than actually finding new antibiotic drugs or molecules that are novel. So um, I feel that uh, with our technology um, advancing so much in environmental studies, I think it will be much easier to find these phages, which are more effective against the pathogens or uh, clinical infective particles that are very, very uh, needed in, in, in today's work. I think um, uh, just the spreading the hope that we can actually win this fight uh, is important. My hope is that people's attitude will change and see that AMR is not something that is uh, inconquerable. It is something that we can do something about. It happens and starts with, I think, uh, hospitals, health facilities, nursing homes, try to identify people who are more vulnerable and also help the industry a little bit to develop new technologies and incentivize them to uh, invest in it. I know we have to have, no matter what, we have to have some kind of backup. God forbid if we get into a situation where nothing is working for very normal common infections. I remember a couple of years ago, there was a woman that she got infection after a hip surgery and basically uh, things got worse and worse for her and she ultimately died. And uh, because none of the 26 antibiotics that were there were able to actually treat her. So what I'm trying to emphasize is that do not think that this is unreal. This is actual real stories. And uh, there are many, many more where we were unable to actually uh, treat infections, uh, which were common infections in people and they lost their life. Uh, we need uh, very concerted eff efforts, not only just nationally, but internationally. And if we do that, there is no doubt in my mind that uh, certainly this will um, lead to areas um, where people will cooperate and help the situation where AMR is going to be behind us pretty soon.